How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. Thanks for checking out the channel. I love showing off cool stuff, especially when it's stuff gifted to me. Yay, free stuff. <laughs> this game right here. Look at this. Riggs Saturday mornings. All my favorite things. Saturday morning cartoons, breakfast cereals, and of course, video games. That was my Saturday mornings for many, many years. Kind of still is, too. Not your everyday average Nintendo game, though. Because inside is a Raspberry Pi with Retro Pi. This is basically an emulator. It's an emulation station, all in a Nintendo cartridge. And this is a standard issue Nintendo cartridge. Even feels the same weight as one and everything. Uh, it has two USBs for two controllers, HDMI, and then the micro USB is what uh, powers it. Is what charges it. It's the same kind of USB that maybe charges your uh, PlayStation 4 controller, uh, your Kindle uh, Fire. We use it for that too, and many other devices too. So. Uh, we're going to open it up to see what it looks like on the inside, and then we'll also uh, plug it in through the HDMI to the TV so I can show you exactly what it emulates and how well it emulates. So many systems from, like, Atari, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, MAME, um, PlayStation even. I mean, we're going we're gonna to look at a few things anyway. Not going to go through the whole gambit of everything, but we're going to see a whole lot into what this little thing can do. Let's check it out. Now, before I uh, open it up here, I want to read this note, which just says, John, I wanted to say thank you for all you do in the retro community and your videos, especially for repros. Please enjoy this gift. Let your kids use and abuse it. <laughs> just have fun. Best. Uh, this is from Chris. You can find Chris at PHX Retro Games, at PHX Retro Games. Um, he posted something similar to this, and that's when on Instagram, I was like, dude, that's awesome. And he was just like... I'll, I'll make you one. And I was like, I'll, I'm not going to turn that down. So so here it is. Uh, let's take a look at the inside, and then let's plug it in. I love the attention to detail, too. He actually asked me what my favorite breakfast cereal of all time was, and I said it was ice cream cone cereal, my favorite cereal. I actually put that in there, too. So thanks, Chris. Man, I appreciate that. Uh, this is a five screw, but there's nothing in that middle screw. It's just going to be these four here. As always, using my 3.8 millimeter game bit, and then there's a ribbon connecting both, so I'm going to be extra careful with this. But there you go. As you can see, just like a uh, it's just a Raspberry Pi on the inside. There's the HDMI. That's the uh, MIDI, and then uh, not the the, the mini um, USB. And then there's the two uh, USBs there for the controllers. And it's also where you port uh, plug in your keyboard if you use a keyboard, which you will need to use a keyboard for Mame. And I'll show you why here in a couple seconds, um, as well as how to dump your games onto the Raspberry Pi. In fact, dumping your games onto the Raspberry Pi, one of the easiest things you can do. And I'll show you how you can do that right now. All right, so as soon as you pop in your uh, memory stick at the RetroPie folder, you got the ROMs folder, and then whatever you put in here, the emulator's already in there. That's just where you load up the ROMs. And if there's anything in those folders, then things will play. So I got Nibbler here. And as the zip file, just going to drop it right in the main for all. Good to go there. And then the other ones, you just put in individually. So for this one, oh, I didn't pay for uh, WinRAR yet. Okay, well, I'll, I'll work on that. Um, <laughs> this one's Super Nintendo. And then um, I also downloaded this. Uh, it's a Beavis and Butthead Streets of Rage 3 hack. And we'll put that one in the Mega Drive, which is your Sega Genesis. Um, I have a few other ROMs in other folders too, so we'll check out a few of them and see how they run. Now, to dump these ROMs from this onto this, simply enough, the same controller's ports that you use here, you just have to plug it in, and it does all the work for you. But you need to power it on first. If once, the, once the power is going, then it knows that there's the games in there, and it puts them on the ROMs where they're supposed to be, and then it's all taken care of. But... So this is doing nothing. This is just me putting it in there. Um, but you have to have the micro USB in there too. So, so I'm going to plug that in first, then plug that in. Then we're going to check out some ROMs. In the meantime, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and definitely click the bell icon as well so you get first alerts on when new videos pop up so you can learn how to do stuff like this yourself. I can take this out here. There we go. So once you pop it in with the micro USB, there is that symbol. That means good. Um, if you have a... If that symbol flashes... 
those raspberries in the corner, if it's flashing, it means you have a bad micro USB cord. So maybe get a better one, you know, not some cheap uh, gas station one or something <laughs> like the one I try to use. Uh, this is completely normal. It's going to boot up a little bit and calibrate some things. I don't know what it's doing, but it's uh, th this is this is totally normal. We'll do some of that for you. And then we're going to go right into the menu where it's going to recognize there's a controller plugged in. I'll give you the, this is the emulation station. It recognizes a controller plugged in. Uh, the first controller I tried was the USB uh, Genesis looking paddle that came with the generations, but this is going to be a PlayStation 3 controller. You just push which buttons you want these to be, A, B, X, Y. Um, if you do this like Super Nintendo controls with the A, B, X, Y, that will also match up with what a PlayStation controller is as well. So when you're doing PlayStation emulation, uh, the triangle will be triangle, circle will be circle, etc. Um, it'll take a little bit to set in, and then there they go. Choose which system you want to play, and go from there. Now, I'm not too concerned about Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, but I do want to show up a couple things here. Um, now, you can't have folders inside folders. I tried to put a folder um, of something else, didn't recognize it, so you have to have the loose games um, in the ROMs folder. And if you go, if you hold the button down, you'll start scrolling super fast, as you saw. Um, this is, I think, just basically the full set. Um, and there's a few other hacks and repros and stuff in here, too. Not repros, but you know what I mean, like hacks and, um, you know, prototypes and stuff. I want to show off Castlevania 3 because this is a game that's hard to emulate. In fact, some clone systems won't even play this. But on this one, seems to play pretty good. I had the sound turned down, but the sound sounded fine on this game. Looks great to me. Looks like Castlevania 3, one of the best. So, all right, so already off to a great start with the uh, with this here. Um, to back out, hold start, push select, just like you do with the TurboGrafx-16 games, and it'll bring you back to the menu. That makes it very handy. That's a quick little shortcut there for you. Uh, another game I wanted to show you, just because I can, is the Super Mario Bros. 3 Mix. Now, this is a uh, fan-made hack. Super, super awesome game. I'd highly recommend it if you haven't checked this out yet. Um, kind of a, you know, all new levels. The three characters doesn't matter who you play as. Um, but then also with the um, the A and B buttons, the other two buttons are already set for turbo. Well, I died there. But the cool thing is, oh, look at that. How did that happen? Well, if you hold the L or R trigger and then push select, that'll be your save and load state. So you don't need to save your game. The, the old conventional means. You can save it anywhere and then load it anywhere. If it fell down there, hold the L trigger, push select. Right there you go. All right, see? Pretty, pretty cool. All right. So Nintendo, I'm not so concerned. Uh, Nintendo 64, I was curious. Uh, and even though the sound is a little staggering, uh, the visual actually looks pretty good. Um... I'm curious to see what other games... Now, I did, I did try uh, WWE No Mercy, and uh, it didn't look too good. It tried to run, but still a little choppy there. And same as the Nintendo, you can also save state this one, too. So I'm going to keep on hitting L. <laughs> keep on... Hold L, hit select. Um, hold R, the R, R trigger and select. We'll, uh, we'll do that for you. So Nintendo 64 doesn't look so bad. MSX, the old computer system from Japan... Has some pretty fun games if you're a you know classic classic vintage retro gamer. Um, these are pretty fun here, so I'm gonna show off one of these right here. Um, I didn't know they made a Back to the Future game uh, for the MSX, and it's a pretty simple game, but still you know there's there's a charm to it. You know it's already better than the LJN one that we got. <laughs> Just run and jump over cops. Oh fun. Why not? Um, I couldn't save or load state this one, but not that really, not that really need to, I suppose. So yeah, so MXX um, isn't isn't so bad. MSX was a great uh, like like a bunch of Konami games on that one. I want to show off Labyrinth just because hey, there's also a Labyrinth game. Maybe you uh, did or didn't know, but what a cool graphic that is. There's Jareth. Right on. If you want to see what this game looked like, I'll just show you a quick little clip of it here. All right, I, I you know, having trouble reading the Japanese part of it, but hey, there's Hoggle. Send something. 
probably needing plastic or something. Um, th this is a Vectorex game. So Vectorex looking pretty good. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do in this game. But, you know, interesting to ch check out some of the other Vectorex games now that I have a chance with this, uh, with the, with the uh, Retro Pie here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Virtual, one of the first walking quest games there. Uh, of course, we have Star Fox for the Nintendo 64. It sounded staggering like the Nintendo 64. Well, not Star Fox 64, just Star Fox for the Super Nintendo. Um, visually, it looks all right. It sounds a little choppy. Um, I'm not going to, the sound's turned down right now, but it looks all right. So looking forward to checking this out. Uh, a couple things I was really excited about was the Famicom disc system. Now, the first time I tried to play this, it didn't work. But then when I put the uh, Famicom Disk System BIOS in the BIOS folder, labeled FDS underscore BIOS, uh, as you can see, now it plays just fine. So you can actually now play Famicom Disk System games on your TV without a Famicom Disk System. Um, now the select button will flip it over, because usually you yeah, load it up, it'll say, you know, push side B, you flip it over. On this one, the select button flips it over for you. So once you do that, you can go from there. And there you go. Start playing Famicom Disk System games. Neo Geo, um, you can see the Neo Geo file in there. Those are the BIOS. So instead of putting them in the BIOS folder, you put, it in the, put the Neo Geo BIOS in the Neo Geo folder. And then from there, I was like, oops, I broke it. And nope, that's what it's supposed to do. So there you go. Do some wind jammers. I've, I've never really been good at this game, but it sure is a fun game there. Yeah, no, there you go. <laughs> All right, moving along. MAME is what I really wanted it for. I wanted to have a MAME system, a MAME machine. Um, there's another little trick that you need to do with it, though, and it requires having a USB keyboard because you need to initiate, uh, when you chose your con uh, controller settings, oh, this is what happens if it doesn't work. I'm still learning what doesn't work, so it's going to come right back. All right. Um, I'm going to show you here. You have to put on your uh, con uh keyboard through the other uh, USB, um, hit tab, it'll open up this menu, and you have to choose a one-player start, or whatever player start you want to use. So um, you have to initiate that on your controller, just to make it easy, just for convenience. So I'll just hit the start button for that one. And then you also need an insert coin button. So then push the uh, A button, or the circle button, on my PlayStation controller, and I'll put uh, select for this one. So select now is the insert coin button. Now you can, if you want, you can just leave your keyboard plugged in all the time. If you're using this for MAME, it may not be a bad idea, but there you go. I'm gonna keep on hitting the select button as many credits as I want on that one. So keep that in mind. Now, in this screen right there, that will get that little white box. If you hit the select button, you can actually select from other menu options, including other emulators. I chose the other emulator for MAME because without it, you'd have to hit the escape button to uh, escape the game, but with this one, you can do the other systems, like you can hold start, hit select, to back out, and choose another game to select. Um, but it's up to you, completely up to you. I just did that just for the convenience of having that option. It does give you the kind of the um, the iPad, or the, like the um, iPod music playing, where you just keep on backing out and going in. Sega CD, another one, you had to have the Sega CD BIOS labeled specifically BIOS underscore capital CD underscore U <laughs> dot bin. But when you do that, you put it in the BIOS folder, and I'll put the description in the, uh, you know, I'll put description below on how to do that. Uh, here you go. Now you can play Snatcher, one of the best games of all time, not just for Sega CD. Certainly one of the best, probably the best game for Sega CD, but certainly one of the best games of all time, an early uh, Hideo Kojima game. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> yeah. I'm Gillian Seed. I've been assigned to Junker headquarters affected today. Oh, you're Mr. Seed. Please forgive me. Yeah, so audio sounds fine. Um, the timing, I think, is the same. I'm doing pretty good here. This is Time Gal, kind of a Dragon's Lair type game. Um, but sometimes these CD type games... Um, I'm curious on whatever. Now, look at this. This is PlayStation. I'm really, really impressed. Really impressed how well uh, PlayStation emulates. So, you got that. You could have had a chance, finally have a chance to play the uh, LSD Dream emulator or the Dream Simulator. This LSD game. Such a weird game. Uh, 
And again, just like the Sega CD, it's also CD based, so I think there is a slight lag on the controls. And I found that out. Hey, police nuts. Does that sound familiar? That's where it came from. So, you got Snatcher, and then you got police nuts. Um, and this is the translated Police Knots too, so you can play the translated, you know, like fan translated games. Police Knots never came out in America. Um, I'll talk about the lag in the controls, and this is one game that I learned about that, where I'm actually pretty good at this game hitting the button exactly right on time. Uh, this version, not so much. Um, it turns out I had to hit the correct button like on the offbeat before the button for it to actually synchronize and hit up. Um, you know, so I actually play the game a little bit. Now, to my advantage, I'm actually slower than I should be on Parappa the Rapper. So, <laughs> so the delay in controls actually worked to my advantage playing Parappa the Rapper um, as opposed to <laughs> you know, trying to get it timed perfectly. So, there you go. Um, there's so much more to, like, uh, you know, the Lynx played fine, Game Boy played fine, other systems played fine as well. There's a whole lot of tinkering to do still. Um, a whole, I'm still discovering new games, um, especially with MAME. Like, the MAME has to match up with the right BIOS or something like that. So, um, I'm finding out which MAME games work, which ones don't. And if they don't, you know, you can delete them and uh, move on to something else and kind of go from there. But still for how many things you can do and what you can use, um, it works out all right. Now, I did try popping in a game in the PSP folder. There is a PlayStation Portable folder. I popped a game in there, um, and it didn't show up at all. So I don't know if that's actually working for me or not. I'm going to skip it. I don't mind. Um, but still, for everything it is, this RetroPie, super, super handy, super convenient, um, and just fun, and, and easy to load up, uh, easy to load games up onto it, and, um, just have some fun, especially with MAME, especially with PlayStation, some of those games you didn't have a chance to play, um, or even maybe some imports that are, uh, fan translated, get a chance to check those out, too. And it's crazy to think all those games, and then some, are all in this little Nintendo cartridge, literally a Nintendo cartridge, well, shell, anyway, um, about the same size as the one. Think about the portability of something like this. Bring this to your friend's house, a couple of USB controllers, you'll be good to go. Very, very cool. I will recommend not keeping this thing plugged in at all times, or even into your computer. Um, I did try a few other games in the meantime. One of them was like the Last Impact Mario 64, you know, overworld thing. Um, and it got hooked on something, like it didn't want to load or didn't want to dump off. And this thing got really, really hot. Like, super, super hot. I actually had to, like, put my hand through a sock and pull it out <laughs> just because it was too hot to touch. Um, so this thing can overheat. Just keep that in mind if you're loading up a bunch of stuff. And then the cool thing is, I didn't mention this before, is once these are dumped into, these, into the system, there are then they're in here. You have to use a keyboard to go into uh, the menus to delete them. Um, once you do that, you can actually take this back into your computer, delete what's on here, and then load it up with more stuff, and then put that in here, and then this will have the more loaded stuff onto it. So, especially with PlayStation games, you know, you can only do about three or four at a time anyway, so you have to, like, do those on there, then take it out, dump this, put more on here, so you can have all three discs of Final Fantasy VII, or you can have, uh, you know, both discs for Police Nuts or something like that, too, so. Super, super awesome. I want to thank Chris for uh, providing this for me. Thank you so much. If you want yours, um, you can. There are so many tutorials online on how you can build your own. I got mine through PHX Retro Games on Instagram. You can hit him up for the private message or a direct message. See what he can do for you. He'll point you out the right direction or something like that too. But I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this, and I promise my kids are gonna have fun too. <laughs> Part of me says I don't want them to touch it. <laughs> Because I want to keep it, but this thing seems this thing seems pretty safe. Uh, I think I think we'll be all right with something like this. So as always, I thank you for watching. Check out my other videos and other cool items, um, and also check out my other uh, tutorials too on how you can build other stuff like your own Nintendo cartridges. I might actually build one of these myself just to see if I can. I have this one. I want to see if I can do one of my own too. So thank you for watching so much. I appreciate it. Until next video, take care, and we'll see ya. I'm gonna play some more of this right now.